super structured about it to begin. Just closing your eyes and quieting yourself, settling. So I, I know in myself that we, we can quickly switch from visiting and talking to each other to yoga, where we just fold ourselves in and revolve our consciousness inwardly. Just arriving, settling yourself. Connect with your breath. And then connect with your physical body a little bit for a moment. Just say hello. Bring awareness to your body. Notice if there's anything that you need to pay attention to today as far as self-care. Next time you breathe out, draw your navel towards your spine, just toning in the low belly to support your spine. And coming together with sound, with om or humming, so you get the vibration either way. If I think of om as the sound of all sounds, sound of the universe, breathing in deeply. Ah. being present with the lovely quality of the vibration of the breath there. And then you hear your own gentle breathing. Let it become even through the nose with sound. Exhale, low belly towards the spine so that you can reach up your arms and cross your wrists, shoulders down, sit up tall. Take your right wrist behind your left and then reach around and leave your fingers. So the wrists cross from behind and come together with the hands. Bend your elbows and straighten your arms a few times. It doesn't have to be a big movement. It probably won't be a big movement. Bring the core away from the start today. A little squeeze as you reach up, just lightly squeeze your hands. And then exhale, release down and come to easy twist to the left side. Letting your gaze fall back and downward, letting your neck release tension. So that check-in with the body happens in every pose so that we meet that, meet that boundary with respect. Practicing compassion on ourselves to strengthen our compassion muscles. One more breath out. Just let yourself feel complete with this stretch and then change the shape back to center. Recentering, navel to the spine, inhale, arms up, shoulders down. And this time, take the left wrist, wrist behind the right, and then let your palms and fingers come together. Bend and straighten your elbows. Be strong in your tummy. So this practice to awaken our belly center. One more time up, give a little squeeze, breathe in. Breathe out, let go, float down and twist to the right side, looking back and down to a nice degree. Economize when you don't need to change anything. Don't change anything. In this and all the poses. Take one more breath. Feeling complete into that exhale, your own complete pose. And then come back to center. Releasing out your legs. So boat pose, just thinking about how you feel about boat pose. Maybe it's hard. I think it's always hard, but there are ways of practicing it without it being hard. So we just want to release out our legs for a bit here. So lean and find balance on your sacrum. Use the arms for support so you can sit really tall in your spine. Keep your head comfortable so your neck is relaxed. 
And I'm thinking about going into low boat. So if this is something you practice, you can take your hands away and stretch out your legs, but don't strain your back. Work where you are. I'm just trying to wake up the belly center. One more breath. And then catch your shins and release back upright. And let's go to forward fold for a minute just to release across the back of the body. Whatever forward fold feels good for you here. Just a little tilt or all the way down. Meet me in the middle somewhere. Breath shifts into the back body. Let it be rich and deep. By constricting the breath to create the ujjayi sound, we are slowing it down and creating a calmness in the nervous system. Through our practice. One more breath cycles through. Inhale, releasing up and tuck yourself back in. So make sure you're comfortable for about a five minute pranayama practice to awaken energy. That's why now instead of at the end of practice. Make sure you're comfortable and then let your less dominant hand rest comfortably and then your dominant hand is gonna take the index and middle finger to your forehead center, to your third chakra, your third eye. Not the third chakra. <laughs> Just allow that point to be gently touched and sit relaxed, aligned, and we're going to close the right side gently and breathe slowly about three times the left in and out. Inhale, left side. Exhale, left side. Again. Try not to force or strain. Last one. Close the left gently and breathe the right side three times in and out slowly. There's a endless curiosity about the breath, the sensation, the texture, the temperature. One more exhale. And briefly release down your arm for a moment, let it rest. One thing you can do is support your elbow with your opposite hand if you need support there. And come back to your third eye with your fingers, the light rest there, light touches on the nose, close the right side. And the pattern here is inhale slowly, exhale slowly, inhale slowly, exhale fast. Then I'll lead you through, we'll do it together. Inhale slowly, left side. Exhale slowly, left side. Stay on the left, breathe slowly in. And quickly out. Inhale again, slowly, same side. Don't worry if you get lost, exhale slowly. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Last one, inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Switch to the right for the same thing three times. Inhale slowly. Exhale slowly. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Right into inhale slowly. Exhale slowly. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Last one, inhale slowly. Staying on the right side. Exhale slowly. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. 
And then release your hand. Both sides breathing in, breathing out. So the same pattern three times. It's called nine cleansing cycles. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Inhale slowly. Exhale slowly. Inhale slowly. Exhale fast. Last one, both sides. And then slowly breathe in and hold for a moment for a little pulse or two. Float in that stillness. Exhale slowly as you can. And hold for five to 10 pulses. Stay calm, tell yourself it's okay. And then three ujjayi breaths with the whole body to finish. That just means through the nose is down. This one just normalizing, balancing us again. Exhale into the belly center, awakening that main energy center at the navel, our personal power. And then pause and release for a moment. Just give yourself a transition if you feel a little bit light in your head, perhaps. And just notice what that five minute practice made you feel. And then we'll move forward. Standing up, take your time, come round. Really take your time. Let yourself have a little adjustment from that long sit. Stretch everything out in a way that you, you need. Come to interesting spots and stop for a moment. And then when you are ready, stand on up, reach on up. Stretch, side bend to the right, side bend to the left, and stand in Tadasana, freeing the soles of the feet to spread, standing in mountain, composing yourself, open feet, light engagement at your navel center, a sense of readiness for our moving practice. Sun salutation, beginning with mountain. Take a deep breath here. And exhale to forward fold for about three breaths. Fold in, reach where you reach. Legs then as needed. Just let your head and spine hang down as you draw your belly up. Move the breath steadily through the nose. One more time, five breaths, why not? Exhale, Anjani Asana. So stepping back with your left leg to the low lunge. Have a moment to get there. Hands down, if possible, or resting on your knee. So you're, you refine the space between your foot and knee and hold steady. Create that sound of the ujjayi, victorious breathing. One more breath out. Transition your right leg back to palakasana, plank pose. You may start on your knees, lift up if it feels good, hold the earth. Use your whole body, sperm everything, lift your navel. If you need to relieve your back a little bit, you can have your hips a little higher or your knees down. And let's all take our knees down, breathing out. Untuck your toes. Chaturanga, shift forward. Bend your elbows, hugging them into your sides. So just preparation. 
Come into the full pose if you practice it. It's challenging that strength in your chest, shoulders, and back. Exhale. Inhale up, pull back, quarter dog, long spine, head down. Not tucking the toes today. Lengthen as you reach your hips away from your hands. Three. Exhale for four. Dropping in. The only thing we really have is the present moment. Make the most of it. Coming out to your belly, so just carefully slide out to your forearms, release your belly to the earth. Draw your hands by your waist, hugging the elbows in. And lifting up the legs a little bit wide. So take your feet about up to your mat. So your chest is lightly lifted and now lift up your legs. Just a little bit is fine. Feel that squeeze around the glutes, around the sacrum and hips. Just to the right degree for yourself. Three. Feel that powerful strength building and then release down your legs and draw them together. Cobra pose, move your hands forward by your chest. Relax and lengthen. And inhale, just lightly lift your chest and your face. Feel the legs zip up. Reach through your toes. And five. Coming back up to plank pose. You can adjust where your hands are. Plank pose. Then downward facing dog. First one today, five breaths. Work your way in and then be still. Just the breath moving. So we have uplift in the low belly. It's really a third chakra pose, the belly pose. We meditate upon that place in, in this shape. And then use your arms and legs to lengthen your spine. Reach your hips away from your hands. And one more time, deep breath. The uplift in the belly helps us step the right, left leg forward, sorry about that, on Janayasana, second side. Have a moment to find your low lunge shape. Keep your neck neutral and comfortable. And remember you can be on your knee instead or to the floor if it feels okay. Make the compassionate choices. You can always refine your back knee, just pick it up and set it back down, give it the space it needs. Third breath out. And last one. Exhale. Tuck into your back toes. Press and step forward, half lifting, breathing in. Forward fold, breathing out, slowly release into the shape. Inhale up to mountain, up to the sky. And exhale back into your heart. Again, upward reach, breathe in, upward hands. Breathe out, transition to forward fold, mindful all the way. Half lift, breathe in. Taking your other leg back first. So that would be the left leg back first. Manjani Asana. I, if I am confused, I'm sorry. Just Anjali Asana again. Hands to the sacrum this time. Gently back bending, so lifting up your rib cage. The legs are the same. Downward gaze towards the floor. One more breath. Exhaling. And release into your plank pose. We have a moment for that transition. Just take one full breath. And again, coming back quarter dog, pull your hips back, tuck your toes under. Deep breath. 
Let your elbows come down and then slide your arms forward. Work out to your belly nice and safely once again. Hands come down by your waist again and take your right arm behind your back. Take your left arm and reach it overhead and reach your left leg up. Fourth breath, one more time, lengthening that psoas line. Release those actions. Turn your head to the right and take a breath. Shoulders relax. Legs relax too, everything soft. Come back to center, reactivate, hands by your chest. This time the left arm does that inward rotation to fold behind your back. Right arm overhead, reaching. Right leg lifts through five. Be patient when things challenge you. Let new things strengthen your brain. One more time, breathe and reach. And let go of those actions. Turn your head the other way, rest. And one more locust for today, coming back to center. Lift up your arms, lift up both legs wide. Strengthening around the sacrum. Lengthen the front body gently, one more breath. And release. Plank pose, one breath. And step in your feet a bit. And Come to downward dog for five breaths. Heels of the hands. So you can even lift up your hands, lift up your fingers and spread them back down. Lift up your toes and spread them back down. And use a pushing energy into your hands and a pulling energy at your belly and hips. Pull your hips away. Twice more, heart soften towards the earth, not too much, just a little bit. Exhale, navel towards the spine, helps you come to Anjani Asana on the other side. Low lunge, letting the knee travel out towards the toes. Have a moment to make sure you're comfortable and supported, and then you can add hands to your sacrum if you would like. A little tail tuck energy. Draw your elbows towards each other. Gaze down. Everything is this pose at this moment. Find the right effort. Find the breath. Last one. And then slowly release to step forward. Time for the transition. Stretch into half lift when you're ready to breathe in. Fold forward when you're ready to breathe out. Stand up with mindfulness, pressing into the feet so you use your legs. Rise, reach. When you breathe out, slowly float your arms down by your sides. Just let your breath match that downward simmering energy of the exhalation all the way into your belly center. So that's where we finish each breath is there. And speaking of there, triangle pose, four steps from our belly center. Open out to the right towards the back of your mat. Angle your left foot comfortably. So your hips are to the side as you reach your arms out, breathing in. All the limbs active, exhale, keep the belly toned as you come over and down. Land your hand on your leg or shin, or just float the arm. Find the right effort, not overly doing, but energizing too if you feel a little tired, give it energy anyway, trust it. 
One more breath out. Inhale up and over to the other side. Give yourself, be patient, learn that transition. Just come on in as you're ready and breathe. We're going to have equal reaching arms. Eyes turn towards the sky outside of your eye socket. One more time, deep breath. Inhale, energy rise. Exhale, bend your knee over your ankle. If you need to refine the space between your feet, you may. So knee centers, arms slow, breathe in. Then breathe out, extended side angle, lean and reach. I'm focusing today on trying to turn your rib cage up towards the sky. Gently gather your fingers, go to the floor if you want to with your hand. Feel how everything is connected and take one more deep breath. Savor it, let breath be long. And then inhale up and back. Briefly, just one breath to lean back, straighten out the leg. And come back to warrior B. Shoulders rest on the ribs. Head turns to the front. Float your palms up. And flip them back down. So you can go a little bit lower in your pelvis towards the ground for one more breath. So a little grounding down the center. And then relax and change sides. So start with the warrior B shape. And then exhale, lean and reach. Extended side angle, pose. Rotate your cage towards the sky. Gently gather fingers. Keep your feet spreading. Just try to not strain your neck. Just have shoulders off the ears. Twice more. Feel long lines of connectedness inside the body. Inhale, straighten your knee. Up and back, exhale. And then back into warrior B with the arms reaching, turn your head. So we're open-hearted warriors, powerful in our stillness, our groundedness, our focus. Last breath. And make your way out. Just work with your body one action at a time to release out of that shape to the top of your mat. And exhale. And then take the warrior to the front with the right leg goes way back, angling the foot. Help your pelvis turn towards the front and bend your knee over your ankle. If your low back feels a little congested, try asking for a little bit of tail tuck energy. Anytime you feel that. And then arms up, shoulders down, rest your palms, lift your chin and gaze at your nose. Steadiness, centeredness, groundedness, exhale one more time, try to bring your pelvis a little lower. Straighten your knee, turn to the back of your mat. Give yourself a moment to do the same actions, to turn all the way to face that edge, bend out the knee, square in the pelvis. Maybe your hands can help that lowering feeling too, that grounding of the pelvis. Once you've got your stance, inhale, take your arms up, lift your eyes towards your thumbs, Fourth breath, one more time. And exhale, release down your arms. Work your feet close enough so you can press and step out. Top of the mat. And 
One more thing, I'm standing. Um, turn out to the left side on your mat to goddess pose where you swing out your toes, both feet equal to your own degree, and then come down the center line, straight down the middle. Make sure you're balanced, so don't turn your feet out too much. Focusing just on getting low on the legs today, keeping the spine upright, arms wherever they feel supportive. I've got my hands right at um, the crease at the top of my leg and hip. Just working on grounding. If you would like to add lifting up your heels, if that's not outrageous to ask of your body, give it a try. Optional. Focus on your legs and your feet. Let your heels come down. Try to be as low as you can, whatever that is today. And then really think about your glutes. You're going to give them a nice squeeze to help you stand up. So squeeze your glutes to stand. Come to wide parallel feet and slowly forward fold, stretching out the back of the body after that deep work there. And take both arms over to your right leg. Just let yourself be upside down. Receive the benefits of turning yourself upside down and changing the flow. Nourishing the brain and the senses. One more breath, finishing. Mindful transition over to the other leg. Your knees can bend as needed here. Nice uplift in the low belly. And one more breath out. Take your time with that one. And then coming back to center. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, work your feet closer one at a time again, press in front. Earth time, leave your fingers pressed to the sky, breathe in. Forward fold, wrap your legs, breathe out. Half lift, breathing in a gentle extension. Bend your knees and spread your hands. Bring your knees down, come to quarter dog pose. Pull back again. Big ribcage breaths in the back body. Exhale. Elbows down, one more time, out to the belly. Lots of belly practice today. Elbows down, lift your knees, and give your spine enough room as you come down to your belly. One more time. And just set your arms in front, fold them in so they can lift you into a gentle back bend. So just enough lift where it feels okay, so that may be lower or higher for your body. Not the biggest one, because we're gonna focus on the legs and. Again, for a variation of bow pose, where you bend your knees, lift up your knees off the floor, reach your heels towards the sky, maybe add a little tail tuck. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Last time, lift, press your feet towards the sky, and come down, release. You can come to your forearms and lift up to dolphins. You pike up your belly, walk in your feet and let your head hang down. Pressing the elbows and the forearm bones into the earth, creating strength. Whole body strong. Fourth breath. And exhale, slowly bring your knees down together and back to child's pose to start to slow down and stretch it out. Let your arms drape by your sides, shoulders hang. Breath is steady and determined. 
Close your eyes, rest your eyes. And from now on in the practice, let your eyes close when you would like them to, when it feels good. One more slow breath. Coming through to a bridge pose position. Up dog, down dog, optional. If you wanna add that movement, you may, or just come down to your bridge. Bring with you any clothing or support that you need. So have a moment for this transition to our backs. We'll do a lot of back time as well as belly time. Beginning, <clears throat> beginning with your knees bent. Finding the center back of your skull. Take your hands up and just feel that space of your neck off the floor. It's good to just remember that that's naturally there and we want to keep it like that. So the neck is off the floor in all of these poses. Notice how your upper back rests into the earth and then your lower back lifts away. There's a space back there. And then the sacrum comes down and rests on the earth again. So we have that lovely curvature of our spine. Rest for a moment, breathing along the central channel. Rest your eyes, just let the light filter through naturally. And listen for your breath. Part of the practice is withdrawal, withdrawing your senses inwardly. Just taking a break and tuning in. And breathe out one more time. As you do so, really focus on grounding into your navel center. Place your arms on the floor beside you. Your feet come in pretty close to your body and apart from each other. When you're ready, press your feet and lift up your hips. Go slowly, lift up, enjoy the journey and come to a right effort for today for a maybe an eight to 10 breaths day. So a little bit less than your full on or more. Just the right amount. So we are pressing the feet, strengthening the legs and hips, stretching the front body. Not so much bending our backs. as lengthening our fronts and take two more breaths, not overdoing the effort. Exhale, let your spine find the curvature on the floor once again, bring it down with control and let it land and relax. Turn out both sets of toes and take your arms up with your elbows bent on your sides. Throw some windshield wipers with the hips. So both knees going over towards the right side. So you go to the outside of one foot and the inside of the other. And then slowly back the other way. Wherever your arms feel supportive is fine. And just go side to side several times, not rushing. Just letting your hip joints rotate in and out. Releasing from that straight work of the bridge. Once more each way. Just let it feel complete. And find your center with your whole spine once again. Starting with your right leg bent. You're gonna lift the left leg up. So you might bend and straighten it up or lift the whole leg straight if that works for Supta Padangusasana. So catch your ankle or behind your calf 
or encircle your big toe. First two fingers inside, then outside. Find if the knee's bent. So work with yourself. Where is this feeling good today? Just make a connection with your hands and leg. Optional to stretch the other leg out or keep the knee bent. What's feeling good today? If you stretch the leg out, really point both sets of toes. One more breath. Go slowly. Taking the leg across your body into a twist. So the leg might stay straight or not. So take your opposite hand to support the leg as it comes over, rolling to that side for a twist. You could rest your foot against your wall or something, come to the floor or bend your knee. Turn your head the other way. So just not creating strain on your hip. I've got my hand underneath my leg and I'm resting my foot on my door a little bit. Take one more breath. Anchor the belly center. Inhale energy, you can support your leg as it comes back to center. And now opening out the other way. Big hand, elbow on the floor, catch and support. Turn your head away again. Or you can have your big toe if you can reach it. Anchor it into the center. One more breath. Inhale energy, bring up the leg. And exhale, lower it straight or bend your knee to come down. And bend in the knees for the second side to start the same way. Reclining big toe pose. So bend your knee and straighten up or lift your whole leg straight up. Reach up your hands and just catching around your lower leg somewhere or your foot. Take your big toe if you can reach your foot. Just the right amount of lengthening. Maybe taking that the other leg straight out. Find a place where the work is positive, where it respects where you are with your body right now. Feel yourself settle in. Two more breaths. Exhale. Coming across, so either way, knee bent or straight with the other leg. Coming across, use your other opposite hand for some guidance. So if you feel pressure on your hip, just bend your knee as you come across instead. So support yourself, work with asymmetries in your body. Just meet that side where it needs to be and turn your head away. You can reach out that arm that you're facing. Lots of nice earth energy on our backs, grounding. Breathe out. Inhale to return to center. Exhale, open out to the side using that elbow on the floor and the open hand to catch your leg to support it and turn your head away. Or have your big toe if you reach it, wherever you are with your practice. Twice more. This pose activates some mula energy, some of the root. Toning in the pelvic floor a little bit, and then coming back to center and bringing down your leg. Let's bring both knees into the chest now. 
and catch behind your knees for a yin version of the happy baby, which is called stirrup pose. Make sure your head is long and centered. You can add a pillow if you want. If you want to hold in a different way, there are different holds for this pose that are all okay. I find this catching my hands the most supportive and restful feeling. Find a place where you feel that you can stay in this compression and relax all your muscular effort. If it becomes too much, just let your feet go down lower, more over your hips instead. If your toes get tingly or anything, let it be less deep. Give your toes a little wiggle, just make sure they're okay, not too cold or tingly. Just lessen your pose. I keep making my legs go lower and lower so my feet don't get too cold. Soft, soft, just breath and stillness. Breathe out one more time. And just letting go of the pose, coming out and have a spontaneous release. What would you like to do to complement that? So I'm just crossing my legs on my back just to let the hips go the other way. Whatever you want. Rest in bridge. Yogi's choice. Next time you breathe out, re-engage your navel towards your spine. And then release from your spontaneous pose for our legs up. We'll do Ardha Salamba Sharpandasana, the supported whole body pose half. If you would like to stay with your hips on the floor for whatever reason, just support yourself with your legs up. Roll and lift up your hips just halfway. So your legs just angle out over your head and catch your sacrum with your hands and close to the midline of the body. If you'd like to straighten your legs a little more towards the sky, you can, but stay in the half form today. Head centered. Always free to come down if it becomes too much to be lifted. The inner feet rest together. There's something really amazing about that. You just feel your big toes and your feet rest into each other, part of the center line of your body. Try to keep strength in your low belly on your exhales. Twice more. And then carefully release your spine down, slowly come down. Take up your arms and let your feet and hands go away from each other to your own degree. When you start to feel a challenge in your belly center, stop there and hold steady. One more breath, feel that strength in your core. And then bring the legs and hands back towards each other and come into two knees to chest, Apanasana. And 
and releasing to resting pose. Take a little time to get comfortable so you can stay a while at clothing so you stay warm enough. And again, if you don't need to adjust, you don't have to move. Making your way onto your back or your side. Some people like a belly rest. So have that freedom. And just check in to make sure that the, the axial body center is aligned. And then the appendicular body of the limbs comes away from the center. Everything disperses open. Make sure that you have enough comfort in your low back, your upper back, so you can make some refinements, make some space, draw your hips towards your heels a little bit. And let your feet flop out to the sides. Let your shoulders, ask them to press into the earth. Shoulders tend to float, press them down. And then relax up to the centers of your hands. Soft fingers, soft face. Letting this empowering practice be received into our bodies. Noticing the outer layer of the body, the the body that is made of rice. Let it rest, let it all relax. The breath and the heartbeat, all these miracles carry on without our conscious asking. And it's in there energy that we can sense the energetic body, the pranamaya kosha, that keeps us running down to a cellular level. Resting the energy body Be patient as you transition from a day of doing things, an hour of doing things, to a few minutes of being practice. Practicing stillness to help overcome our nature of always going from one thing to the next. One thought to the next. Just be right now. Keep softening. Letting the brain rest. Breaths might become very slow. Just let them be natural, free. Soft around your eye sockets. The gentle sensation of the wind coming in and out of the body.
the ear sensing the vibration of our vital energy. As we continue to rest, we might find there's a, an even deeper place that we sense, and just that bliss of being our bliss body, taking the time to be still so we can find it. Stay very soft. And taking some exquisite time and slowness. Just let yourself know that we're going to start changing. We're going to move to something else that is going to be slow. We're still here right now, so be here now. Just let the breath stretch ever so slightly. Be still again. Continue to let the breath draw you back to more movement of the rib cage. The breath starting to lengthen, especially the inhales. But also the exhales. Try to hold everything out still. One more breath. Just feel that wave pass through the body. The wave of breath is a literal one. Swallow to release your throat. Experience that process. Wiggle your fingers and notice how your toes want to wiggle too. And be still once again. Everything drops. Be still. And with inhale energy, gather your legs together and let your arms do the same, reaching up, reaching down. Just lightly bring the hands and feet together. And then bending your elbows and your knees. Go over to your right or your left side and pause, cradling your head. When we go to the right, our hearts rest. When we go to our left, our bellies rest. But everything pretty much is resting on either side. Let another breath move through. And only then take your top hand to the earth. So most of your weight is on the floor already. So we just want to press up without too much effort to get our torsos up. And come back and tuck yourself in one more time. Whatever that is for your legs, whatever easy pose or lotus variation that you enjoy. And let your hands rest together and the fingertips rest so the palms can separate and just sit with this harmonious practice. Staying still to observe in this lovely non-judgment, one of our attitudes in our yoga practice towards ourselves. 
acceptance of things as they are. And if we've generated benefits that feel blissful and light, just let those things become part of you. And finishing our practice with some gratitude by opening our hands and just sitting, letting any benefits we've generated be shared with all beings, all realms. Perhaps adding a little personal gratitude message, something that you are feeling grateful for now. It can be something simple or large. Gather up your hands, bring them into your heart, breathe deeply in. Ah. Namaste. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and practice with you.